This week on the Inkwell, we take a look at an elegant Italian fountain pen. Designed by Dante Del Vecchio in concert with Pen and Farina, this modern take on a limited edition originally designed by Pen and Farina is the Visconti Pen and Farina fountain pen. Sporting a traditional, classy black look with chrome trim and the traditional Visconti bridge clip, what makes this pen so special? Why would you want to add it to your collection? Why would you want to pay $200 for a chrome nib? Well, hopefully you'll have those answers by the end of the review. So here we go. Like the front end of a car, the clip would, to me at least, be the front end of a pen. And this clip sports the lovely designs that you would find in a pen and farina car, and it sports the pen and farina logo on the finial of the cap itself to complement the Visconti bridge clip. And the marriage of fountain pen and sports car continues from there. Italian sports cars are known for their simplicity, but raw power underneath. And that's what we see here with the pen and farina. It sports a standard cartridge converter, but in a pen like this where you want it to be your daily driver, having a piston filler or an eyedropper or even a bulk filler is not always the best way to go. But for me, the big selling feature of this pen has to be the Chromium 18 Smart Touch tubular nib that Visconti put on this pen. The tubular nib provides excellent feed to the nib itself, providing a wet but not too wet writing experience that we'll see here in the writing sample. So for this writing sample, we're using Rhodia dot pad paper and Pelican Edelstein Topaz for the ink. The reason we're using that particular ink is I've found it to be a good neutral flowing ink that tends to behave equally in pretty much every pen I put it in. Now you can see that this is an extra fine nib, but it's got a pretty good amount of flow to it, and I don't find the pen starving for ink at all throughout the entire writing sample. One thing of note is that even with my upright writing style that I tend to have, this nib behaved very well. It wasn't too scratchy, it wasn't too feedbacky. It actually tended to glide across the paper, which is a testament to this particular nib design, given that a lot of people tend to get onto Visconti for their nib quality control. I didn't see any problems with this nib. One thing of note though, as you can see here, even though it's wet when you're writing, it is still a dry nib overall. Now, one thing I wanted to show here though, and this is slowed down a little on, on the film. Even though it's an extra fine, with just a little bit of pressure, you can open it up to about a medium, medium broadish nib and actually get some variation to it without having to apply a lot of pressure at all, which is really awesome. So going back to the original questions of what makes this pen so special, and is it worth paying over $200 for, I would have to say, well, first and foremost, yes, I would pay the price for this pen that it's listed at, which right now on Penchelet is $237. As for what makes it special, it's a stainless steel nib using chromium in quotes, but the tubular nib does provide a really good amount of ink flow and it provides a really nice writing experience. If Dr. Brownie from Not Another Pen Podcast hadn't sent this pen to me, I may have missed out on actually trying this pen and probably would have kept overlooking it in place of other pens like a Pelican M400 or things of that nature, which on the secondary market you can find for around that price as well with a 14 karat gold nib. But with the steel nib you get here, you really can't go wrong. So if you want this pen or any other pen, Head on over to penchelay.com, click on the radio podcast link at the top of the page, and enter Inkdwell in the How You Heard About Us section for your 10% off site-wide. Once again, thank you to Dr. Brownie for providing this pen for review. Thank you to channel sponsor Pen Chalet, and thank you for watching these videos. If you want to support the channel, one, like, comment, and subscribe on the video. 
head on over to patreon.com slash the inkdwell where you can support the channel there. And follow me on Twitter and Instagram at the inkdwell. That about wraps up this review. So if you have any other questions, ask them in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next week. Thank you.